Video games have always been a means of escape for Josh. He has dreams of himself as his character from the game where he saves the world. He may think his favorite video game is purely make-believe, but unexpected visitors may soon give him a chance to experience the thrill of saving the world in real life. A family of four runs away from a group of futuristic armored soldiers pursuing them. The young boy drops his stuffed toy, but his father tells him to leave it. Seconds later, the family hides behind a dumpster, but one of the soldiers pushes it aside with ease and points a laser gun at them. Suddenly, Future Man shoots the soldier through his chest and saves the family. He gives the young boy his stuffed toy, and the family thanks him. He tells them who he is, but they call him Joshy. Finally, Josh Futterman wakes up from his dream and realizes his father, Gabe, is calling his name. When Josh gets out of bed, he accidentally steps on his joystick, breaking it. Later that day, Josh goes to the video game store for a new joystick, and Paul asks him why he still plays Biotic Wars. Tracy thinks it's because Josh has a crush on the character Ty from the game. Josh says he likes playing the game because no one else has ever beaten it. Josh works as a janitor at Cronish Laboratories, a medical facility whose main objective is to develop a herpes cure. He forgets to place a wet floor sign in the hallway, and Dr. Yakamura slips and drops a tray of samples. Later, he passes Carl, a security guard, and they greet each other. Inside a storage room, Josh plays Biotic Wars, where he's Future Man, helping the resistance against the biotics, superior beings that release a pathogen, wiping out most of the Earth's inhabitants. Minutes later, security guard Ray finds Josh playing and watches as the janitor loses at level 83, the level Josh can never pass. Later, Josh sees Jerry, a Cronish employee he has a crush on. Dr. Stu Camillo sees Josh and expresses his disdain for Josh, causing the samples Dr. Yakamura was carrying to break. Stu continues berating Josh about his menial job until Dr. Elias Cronish tells him to stop. After Stu leaves, Josh tries not to look at the sore on Dr. Cronish's lip, but the doctor says he's had herpes for 40 years, and so Searching for a cure is why he built the lab in the first place. He contracted herpes from Barbarella at a party in Caltech the night of the moon landing in 1969. At dinner, Josh asks his parents, Gabe and Diane, if they thought he'd do something more with his life. His parents are caring and supportive and tell him he can do anything he sets his mind to. Josh still feels he shouldn't be living at home with his parents and playing video games. In his room, Josh reaches level 83 on Biotic Wars again and decides to try playing it without any weapons. He finally reaches the final boss and finishes the game for the first time. He is elated and runs down to tell his parents, but they went out to get snacks. Josh returns to his room, where he pleasures himself as he imagines his video game character kissing Tiger. Suddenly, Tiger and Wolf appear inside his room, startling him and causing him to fall on a table. Seconds later, Tiger and Wolf explain they've come from the year 2162 to ask for Future Man's help. The video game is a recruitment tool sent back in time to find the person who can beat the game and become the savior. Josh has to go back to 1969 with them to save the world. Tiger then takes out a time travel device or TTD, but Josh still doesn't believe them and thinks they're actors. After Tiger pushes buttons on the TTD, lights start flashing, and a whirlwind surrounds them. In a blink of an eye, they've traveled back to 1969, and Josh runs out of the room. In the living room, he sees his grandparents and father, only much younger, watching the moon landing on TV. His grandfather chases him around the house, thinking he's an intruder. Tiger and Wolf watch to see Josh's fighting abilities, but they're disappointed at what they witness. Finally, Wolf jumps in to stop the fight, and Josh stumbles out a window. Josh looks around and sees people wearing 60s clothes and driving 60s cars. He runs into town and stands in the middle of traffic in disbelief of actually being in 1969. Moments later, Tiger and Wolf find him and ask why he can't fight. Josh explains that in his time, video games are for recreation and escapism. Across the street, bikers insult their clothes, and Josh tells Tiger and Wolf they need to blend in. Tiger approaches the biker's leader and demands his clothes. The biker refuses, so she breaks his finger and beats him up, and Wolf joins in as they fight the group. After Tiger and Wolf defeat the bikers, Josh stops them from ending any lives and convinces them to take the clothes and leave. Minutes later, the trio wears the biker's clothes and steals two bikes, with Josh riding with Tiger. At a deli, Tiger expresses her disappointment at thinking Josh could help them find Elias Cronish and prevent the biotic wars. Josh says Dr. Cronish is a nice guy. Still, Tiger says Cronish's research leads to the discovery of the super cure only the biotics receive, hence the annihilation of everybody else. Then, Josh remembers that tonight is when Cronish contracts herpes, and suggests they stop Cronish from getting herpes, preventing the biotic wars. Tiger hands him an X-28 Psychoblaster, a weapon from the game. While
While handling the gun, he accidentally fires into the wall, so they exit the deli. Officers Skarsgård and Santiago respond to the incident in the deli. Wolf throws a subatomic sensor mine under the police car, causing it to explode. Tiger pulls Josh onto the motorcycle, and the three drive off to Caltech. At Santiago's house, a news report of his passing plays on the TV as his pregnant wife answers the door to let Skarsgård in. Santiago's entire family is in the house, so Skarsgård doesn't know how to break the news. Meanwhile, Josh, Tiger, and Wolf stop at a gas station, where Josh reminds them to stop killing people. Wolf gets angry, heads to the store, and trashes the place until the owner points a shotgun at him. By the pumps, Josh asks Tiger why Wolf doesn't like him, and she says it's because he's weak and not what they expected as the savior. Seconds later, Tiger is perplexed when she sees a baby and asks Josh what it is. Josh wonders why she's never seen one before, and she explains her generation was sterilized, making them the youngest people on Earth. She aggressively approaches the mother and demands the baby. The woman is terrified inside the car as Josh begs Tiger to stop harassing her. Inside the store, the owner thinks Wolf is part of the Double D biker gang. He forgives Wolf for trashing the store and waits for Wolf to return the secret handshake. Wolf twists and breaks the man's fingers, and Josh and Tiger come rushing in after hearing the yelps of pain. Wolf says he didn't kill the man, and the trio drives away. As the three ride off, the baby's mother calls the police from a phone booth. In the store, the owner calls the Double D's members and says the trio is headed for Caltech. At the party, Josh discovers the party is exclusively African American, so they might have difficulty blending in. Suddenly, Cronish approaches them, and Wolf angrily blurts out an offensive phrase, so the trio gets kicked out. Outside, Josh sees a man named Lamar, passed out and wearing an astronaut costume. He switches the outfit with his coat, then tells Tiger and Wolf to stay outside and secure the perimeter. Inside the house, Josh sees Cronish talking to Barbarella, but several partygoers stop to speak to him, so he pretends to be Lamar. Outside, Tiger and Wolf use trees, chairs, and car doors to build a barricade on the road. A police car drives by and radios others that they might have found the people from the deli. Skarsgård hears the transmission and drives off. At the party, Josh sees Cronish about to place a spliff in his mouth that was just on Barbarella's lips. He swats the spliff from Cronish's hands and apologizes. Cronish is about to use a cup the woman just used, so Josh slaps the cup, saying there's a bee inside. Cronish pulls Josh aside and delegates Josh with bathroom duties. Outside, Skarsgård joins the other police officers as they negotiate with Tiger and Wolf. Josh plunges the toilet in the bathroom when he sees Cronish dancing with Barbarella. He joins them on the dance floor to get between them, using dance moves from the future. Outside, the bikers arrive and demand to pass the police barricade to get Tiger and Wolf. The police refuse, and a fight breaks out, and while everyone else is distracted, Skarsgård rallies officers to exact revenge for Santiago. At the barricade, Wolf and Tiger take down the police officers. Skarsgård attacks Tiger, but she knocks him down, leaving three slash wounds on his cheek. At the party, Josh and Cronish continue their dance-off, and Cronish is winning. Josh sees the moon landing on TV and remembers Michael Jackson's moonwalk, and he proceeds to perform it perfectly, winning the dance-off. As the crowd cheers, Barbarella is all over Josh as Cronish walks away defeatedly. Suddenly, Lamar walks in, blowing Josh's cover. Lamar takes Josh's iPhone from his pocket and looks curiously at the device with the black apple. Josh runs up the stairs and sees the chaos outside the house from the window. He calls Tiger and Wolf and tells them they have to go, so Wolf fires up the TTD. They tell him to jump from the window as the whirlwind forms. Josh jumps just in time, and the three return to the present. Tiger and Wolf thank him for a successful mission, and Josh tries to kiss Tiger, who pushes him back aggressively. Josh then sees a bus with an advertisement of Cronish pointing at the sword on his lip, confirming their mission was a failure. In 2162, outside the Biotics headquarters, the Resistance soldiers, led by Tiger, are about to steal the TTD. She promises that all 45 will share the last sugar cube after the mission. In a tunnel, Tiger trips a thermal wire, and diametric chloride gas reaches the other soldiers except for her and Wolf, exterminating them. Biotic soldiers find Tiger and Wolf, and they run to escape before they end up like their comrades. In the present, Tiger holds the sugar cube and looks at it somberly before crushing it in her hand. Later, Josh looks for his parents while wondering where his phone is. His parents walk through the door, and he asks Gabe why there's a gun mounted on the wall. He says they got it when three vagrants entered the house the night of the moon landing. Diane asks her phone assistant, Lamar, about the traffic conditions, so Josh asks her to see her phone. Diane calls the phone a black apple or a blapple. Josh realizes he left his phone in 1969, and Lamar must have found it. Josh returns to his bedroom, where Tiger and Wolf are copulating as a standard operating procedure to release tension. Josh tells him about the ripple effects their 1969 trip
grip had on his family and the world. Tiger says there's no other option but to kill Cronish. Tiger and Wolf have an arsenal of weapons to get to Cronish, and Josh tells them they can't just kill his co-workers. Tiger says being the savior doesn't mean he can save everyone. Outside the Cronish laboratory's building, Tiger tells Josh to lure Cronish out so they can shoot him. Josh reluctantly approaches the building as Wolf wonders why they can't just bring everything down using his minds, and Tiger reminds him they need to confirm Cronish's demise. Outside the entrance, Josh asks Carl where Ray is, but Carl doesn't know Ray, and Josh believes he made Ray disappear with the ripple effects of time traveling. Inside the building, Josh goes to Cronish's office. Jerry tells him that Cronish and Stu are having a meeting, and Josh sees that Stu now has a higher position than Cronish. Seconds later, Josh witnesses Stu berating Cronish about the focus groups and slams the door in Cronish's face. Josh follows the doctor to his office and asks him how he got herpes. Cronish tells him that after losing the dance-off, the fraternity banished him, so he went on a journey of self-discovery, and that's where he got it. Josh sighs and tells the scientist he has a surprise for him outside. After stewing in guilt, Josh comes clean and tells Cronish people are out to get him, and he needs to escape. Cronish thinks Josh is talking about the animal rights activists, and is unfazed about another threat on his life after the thousands he's already received. Outside, Tiger and Wolf are tired of waiting for Josh, so they sneak into the building with a focus group they overheard. Inside the focus group meeting, Wolf impatiently waits for Cronish as they watch commercials of the doctor being very uncomfortable in front of the camera. They get up to leave, but Cindy tells them they can't. Minutes later, Josh looks for Tiger and Wolf by the entrance, but they aren't there. He hears Cindy weeping from the second floor balcony. The company promised her they'd screen the people attending the focus groups better. Inside the trashed focus group room, people suffer from different injuries. They point Josh to where Tiger and Wolf went, and he continues looking for them. On the next floor, Josh finds two scientists in the janitor's closet, their hands and feet bound and their mouths gagged. Elsewhere, Tiger and Wolf are wearing the scientists' coats and use the cards to open the third level of security, but the cards don't work. Tiger believes Cronish is in the lowest level of the building, just like all the other high-ranking officials they've had to kill before. Wolf argues that might not be the case at this time, but she undermines him and reminds him that she's his superior. A few seconds later, Tiger opens a door that only leads to outside the building. The door closes before Tiger can catch it, leaving them locked out. Wolf tells Tiger she has to listen to his ideas too, because he's been by her side from day one. She asks him what his plan is, and they get ready to blast through the door to get to the roof and generate a sonic blast that'll kill Cronish and everyone in the building. Before Tiger and Wolf can shoot the door, Josh opens it from the inside and tells them he can't give them Cronish because he can't participate in this assassination. He promises to talk to Cronish in his office on the top floor and give them a reason not to kill him, and Tiger gives him a chance. When Josh leaves, Tiger tells Wolf she planted a tracker on Josh so he can lead them to Cronish and finish the job. In Cronish's office, Josh tells the doctor to abandon his research, but Cronish tells him he's already made his research public. Now, scientists worldwide can create a cure, so assassinating Cronish won't do anything to stop the treatment from being made. All of a sudden, Josh sees a red dot in Cronish's forehead, so he looks out the window and sees Tiger and Wolf about to take Cronish out. He signals them not to go through with it, but she fires a warning shot. Josh panics and tries to get Cronish to leave to save his life, but then Josh sees the red dot on his body, so he closes the blinds. Tiger switches to thermal vision and sees the two men. She has Cronish in her crosshair, and Wolf tells her to shoot, but before she pulls the trigger, a mine is thrown by their feet and explodes. The blast sends them flying over the edge of the building and into the alley below, where two biotic soldiers attack them. Inside the building, Stu confronts Cronish for releasing the research to the public, so Josh leaves them and rushes to find Tiger and Wolf. Outside, Tiger and Wolf are losing to the soldiers, but then Josh arrives, and the soldier attacking Wolf approaches him. Wolf defeats the biotic soldier as Tiger eliminates the other one. They remove the biotic soldier's helmets revealing faceless fleshy facades. Tiger removes the fleshy mask, and Josh sees that one soldier is Carl and the other is a woman he knows from accounting. Wolf says biotics are human beings and can be anyone around them. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.